As a venture capital analyst, one rule reigned supreme looking for tech companies to buy. If you didn't have a path to it, we wouldn't be investing. It's called the rule of 40, and I used it through my career in venture capital as well as an equity analyst and to pick stocks in my own portfolio. It will help you find stocks with that critical balance between growth and profitability. With it, investors in DigitalOcean Holdings saw the stock jump 9% when the company released its earnings last month. Without it, investors have watched their stocks get slammed, like the 19% crash in shares of Snowflake when it reported its Q4 results. The boom in AI stocks means it's never been more important to make sure your stocks are reaching this rule. I'll show you why that rule of 40 is so important, how to find it in your AI stocks, and highlight the top 5 stocks in the theme. Stick around and I'll reveal all 41 artificial intelligence companies I follow, how they stack up, and this is going to surprise you who is beating the rule and who is not. First up, one I highlighted a few weeks ago, $256 billion Adobe Inc, ticker ADBE. The company is a leader in digital media and publishing, with a suite of products from its Acrobat PDF software to video editing software Premiere. Adobe is primed to grow with our digital lives and is positioned to benefit from the use of AI in the creator economy and entertainment. The company has already integrated AI into its Firefly and Sensei products, and the results are pretty amazing. With generative AI prompts, you can change video and images with just a few clicks. Adobe's Premiere Pro is already the leading video editing software, and this is going to keep it there. Now, as a larger company in the older media publishing industry, Adobe has the slowest revenue growth of our top five, but solid profitability that puts it well above this rule of 40 cutoff. Its leadership and innovation in bringing AI tools to creators could help it increase this revenue growth though a little while not sacrificing that margin, keeping it growing earnings and rewarding investors. It's been two years since recommending shares of Meta Platforms around $220 a share, with the stock up 127% over that time and proving the naysayers wrong. Now, investors don't see much AI in Meta because a lot of it happens in the background with the company's use of artificial intelligence to drive that better user experience and show more relevant ads, but the company is also leading in applications like image editing and its AI assistant. Meta's large language model, Llama, isn't as popular as ChatGPT, but it is far ahead of Google's Gemini and the company is taking the unique route of open sourcing its software for developers. In this, Zuckerberg is hoping he can do what Linux did for to rival Microsoft's Windows in the operating system market, providing Llama free for developers to create that next generation of AI apps. That is going to help the LLM and its app use grow while we're in this land grab phase of AI development. In our rule of 40, Meta actually breaks 60 with its nearly 16% revenue growth and 44% profit margin. At more than 3 billion monthly active users, growth has slowed, but it's still finding new ways to increase revenue per user, especially outside the US, and it's in this cost structure that Meta has been able to bring the stock back over the last year. It's nearly halved the amount it spends on general and administrative and marketing over the last year. It's still spending more than a quarter of its revenue to R&D, and that's going to likely continue to eat in profits as well as it builds out that AI and the metaverse projects, but, but offering Llama as an open source? going to save it from having to hire that army of developers itself. We're just getting started on our list, but I want to show you how this rule of 40 works and why it's so important to finding the stocks to buy. The rule has been used in venture capital for years, finding those startup companies that can balance growth and profitability to create that 10 and 20 times returns, but it can be used to find your best stocks as well. Now, the rule of 40 started as just a health check for software companies, but it's broadly used across investments. It is super easy to use and just says the revenue growth of a company plus its earnings on profitability margins should equal 40 or above. For my list, I'm using a company's revenue growth over the last four quarters, so taking last year's revenue and dividing by the previous year's sales. For example, Meta Platforms reported $134.9 billion in revenue last year and $116.6 billion the year before which gives us a 15.7% revenue growth. Now for the profitability margin, the most common measure here is EBITDA, or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Now using this instead of net margin is important because it gives you the core business profitability without the effects of debt and depreciation, which can skew the bottom line earnings reported. It's a pretty easy number to find anyway. Just take the EBITDA reported and divide by sales. For example, here in the Statistics tab on Yahoo Finance, we see that Meta reported an EBITDA of $61.38 billion against its $134.9 billion in revenue, or about a 45% margin. But then following this rule is so important because of how easy it can be for tech investors to just get swept away in the hype for a company's fast revenue growth, while completely ignoring the fact that it's losing money hand over fist. 
Investors get excited when they hear Snowflake is growing its sales by 40% a year and, and think it's going to be the next big thing, well, only to see it crash when the market realizes that the company is hugely unprofitable and losing $800 million a year. Now, that's not to say that Snowflake or any of these companies not beating that rule of 40 can't be good investments, but the rule is so simple and just a quick way to find the stocks that are creating that lasting value, growing the company and profits at the same time. And it isn't easy to do. Research by Bain & Company found that of 124 software stocks in 2017, only 4 in 10 were able to beat the rule of 40. We see revenue growth across the bottom here, and then the EBITDA across the side, and you see how many of those companies fell below that red line. And it's even more difficult to stay there. Bain found that over the 5-year period, only 22 of those 124 companies, just 17% were able to beat the rule of 40 for 3 or more years. Nation, again, the reason why this rule and using that profitability margin along with revenue growth is so important is because revenue growth is like a narcotic for investors, tempting them into those fast-growing stocks, but then seeing that stock crushed when it fails to create that long-term value. It's because revenue growth can quickly fall and so difficult to revive. Now, this chart shows the average revenue growth for software companies that had higher than 10% average sales growth in 2005. So across those fast-growing companies in 2005, they had a combined average revenue growth just over 30% a year. Amazing growth that promised huge returns if they could keep it up. But then look at what happened. Across these companies, the average revenue growth fell to less than 10% by 2011 and never recovered. Those investors were now stuck with companies growing at less than 10% a year. And if the companies hadn't improved their profitability, there was no value in the shares. So then using this rule of 40 in your investing is just an easy way to find those fast-growing tech stocks that aren't just an empty promise, that are also profitable enough to create lasting value. And next up, won't surprise anyone, but I was surprised at the profit margin on Microsoft, ticker MSFT. Yeah, I know, no surprise here with Microsoft with its investment in OpenAI and ChatGPT, but stick around because I'm gonna reveal the full list of AI stocks later and, and researching this surprised me who is beating the rule and who isn't. For example, Palantir and IBM did not make the cut, and you'll never guess which trillion dollar Magnificent 7 stock didn't either. Now, Microsoft's $13 billion investment into OpenAI is on largely undisclosed terms, but does give it the right to 75% of profits until it's earned back that money, and then a lower percentage of the profits beyond. More importantly though, it gives Microsoft a close relationship to arguably the world's best large language model. And Mr. Softy has already started developing AI features into its Copilot Assistant and into Bing Search, something I think is going to help finally chip away at Google's 92% dominance in the search market. Microsoft grew revenue by 18% year over year in the most recent quarter and was still able to maintain its 44% operating margin different from the EBITDA margin that we're measuring, but related. In this, the company grew its gaming revenue by 49% last quarter and is now a powerhouse after its Activision acquisition. Now, gaming is still under-monetized and could be an even bigger driver of revenue in the future, so what we have with Microsoft is a company with outstanding profitability and a lot of levers it can pull for that higher revenue. Now, the 12-month revenue growth is lower at 11.5%, but that EBITDA margin is the second highest of our top five at nearly 52%. At that profitability, Microsoft can afford to spend more, stretching its AI lead further to drive revenue growth, and it would still be well above that rule of 40 cutoff. Symbotic, ticker SYM, was a new one for me and quite a bit smaller than the other top five at just $24 billion market cap. The company is using AI-powered robotics and software to automate warehouse and logistics with a four-year development partnership alongside Walmart that alone could send revenue booming higher. Now, while growth here has been tremendous, 98% higher in the most recent quarter, there is more risk here than the others. That growth was off only about half a billion dollars in revenue the year before, so off a low base to start with and just nine customers. Still, that $23 billion in revenue backlog and positive cash flow makes Symbotic one to watch. Of course, the year-over-year 85% revenue growth will slow, but that EBITDA margin will also come up as the company evolves. If it can really deliver on the promise of reinventing warehouse operations with AI, this is going to have a very long runway for growth. NVIDIA, ticker NVDA, surprised me not for topping the list of AI stocks, but for how much it beat everyone else on this list. Looking at these numbers, remember this is a $2 trillion company, so to post that kind of revenue growth is just beyond amazing. NVIDIA's revenue growth and EBITDA margin together were more than twice any other company on the list. Of course, NVIDIA is on the forefront of this revolution in artificial intelligence. In order to develop those AI models and software, the world is seeing an explosion in demand for semiconductors, which are like the brains of a computer. 
Accelerated computing is that need for faster growth and processing and the complexity of these calculations, many of which can only be handled by NVIDIA's in innovative chips. Now, I'm going to show you that full list of 41 AI stocks and how they rank on that rule of 40, but there is another way to think about this theme, and it could mean the difference between benefiting from the rise in artificial intelligence versus being the one of the tens of millions that lose their jobs. Check out this video for the 11 AI stocks to buy before you lose your job and which industries are going to benefit the most. So here's that full list of AI stocks and how they stack up in this rule of 40. Now I used trailing 12 month data from E-Trade for the list. So this is going to be the revenue growth for the last four quarters versus the year before and then that EBITDA margin over the last year. Now you might also have to check the most recent quarter results on these to, to make sure they're still reporting that revenue growth and profitability. And you can see here, 10 of the 41 stocks here are beating that rule of 40 for growth and profitability, less than one in four on the list of AI stocks. We covered those top fives here, but there are a few more great names here to highlight. Again, I would defer to that higher revenue growth companies because it is so much easier to improve profitability than it is to recharge sales growth. Losing that trend in sales growth, it will often show a slowdown in the industry or a company that's losing its competitive advantages, and both of those are very difficult to overcome. On the other hand, lower profitability can be fixed with quite a few strategies like cutting non-performing segments and staffing. For that, outside the top five, I'd say the biggest opportunity here is in CrowdStrike Holdings, ticker CRWD. Cybersecurity is one of my favorite themes right now with the demand surging and that 40% revenue growth should be fairly robust. Improving the EBITDA margin, even a few percent here, is going to boost earnings for this stock and could see the shares jump. On the other hand, I think Alphabet, ticker GOOG, is one to avoid here, though it is beating the rule of 40 right now. I highlighted last week how Google could see its dominance in search destroyed by competition from Chat, GPT, and Microsoft's bank. Ad revenue tied to search accounts for 76% of total revenues, so the death of that cash cow is going to make even that low 8.7% sales growth hard to reach, and increased spending to develop its own AI is going to bring down that profitability margin as well. I think Alphabet falls out of this ranking fast and disappoints investors. I've also highlighted the AI stocks almost beating the rule here, just four of which in that revenue growth and profitability above 30. Now here, Arm Holdings may actually be beating this rule on the quarterly basis, but year over year it wasn't, so I'd still keep an eye on that one. ServiceNow, ticker NOW, and Palo Alto Networks, ticker PANW, are strong contenders and just need to boost their profitability a few percent to get here. Now, the fact that $1.9 trillion Amazon didn't make the cut shows you how difficult it is to reach that rule of 40. I think it's a great company though and an undervalued stock, but if you're targeting the highest returns, you want to focus on that growth and the companies that can convert that growth into profits. I'd still give some of these a look though, especially the ones posting the strong double-digit sales growth and just need to improve their profitability a little. Stocks like Cloudflare, Splunk, and Palantir would be good candidates in this group. And then we have the AI stocks you need to watch out for, the ones everyone is talking about but that just don't cut it. Stocks like Intel, which has done well over the last year, has seen some improvement in its revenue growth but I think is ultimately going to disappoint long-term investors. See the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks with the link I'll leave in the description. One of these up over 102% in the last year alone. Or click on the video to the right for the 11 AI stocks you need to be watching before artificial intelligence takes your job. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.